welcome back to the NSC5 journey. The next section we're going to talk about is the Forty Manager system settings. We've already covered the introduction to this video series, along with add-ons and the differences between the Forty Manager and the Forty Analyzer. So, where are we on the plan? To recap, we've done the Forty Manager, the introduction, and now on the Forty Manager system settings. This will most likely be uh, a few videos to cover all of this because it's such a big element of the course. So before I go into actually looking at the basic system settings and a default uh, configuration for the 40 manager, I want to take note on the difference between a physical and a virtual machine and different ways you can buy the appliances. And then we're going to look into why you choose one over the other. So physical appliances, when we're thinking about this, we're more interested about the factors and what it can give us. It's more the model element as opposed to the VM, which is driven primarily around the licensing. With physical appliances, you've got to keep in mind form factor. Do you have 1U, 2U? What interfaces do you require? Is it fiber uplinks? Is it RJ45, copper? What storage capacity? Do you need RAID? Are you going to have remote storage? Um, what about hot swappable? Is it going to be hardware or software? Software, hot swappable, can't be swapped out while the system's running. Hardware can. Is that important for you? Redundant power supplies. I've just put together two 40 manager examples of two models there. You can see the 40 manager 300D, it has 300 ADONs or VDONs, and it can do up to 2 gigabytes a day on logs. Whereas the 40 manager 1000D, again, 2 gig of, uh, 2 gig of data a day, which is quite a lot, and of course, 1000 VDONs. As you get to more of the enterprise, the higher end, it can do more than 2 gig a day. The VM differs. It's not so much about the appliance and what it can offer physically, but more the licensing and what the licensing unlocks to the platform. It's designed for EXI, Hyper-V, AWS, and it follows that license model. The basic license for the trial is 10, 10 VDOMs with 1 gig of logs per day. And then you've got the 40 Manager VM5000, 25 gig of logs per day, 5000 VDOMs. Also with the closed network mode, is that going to be important for you? Do you want to? have the 40 manager publicly going out network and pulling down all the latest signatures and check your web filtering and, and so forth or would you rather have all your devices do it itself or maybe this particular 40 manager is going to sit somewhere else in your network and report into a, a larger 40 manager and those are the sort of things you want to think about when you're looking at what models or whether you should be VM or it should be physical the equipment that we have for the video series is actually the VM, it's a 15 day license which is the FGM VM base. Now I want to touch on Forty Manager use case, what would it like inside of a, a company. Now this particular use case is going to be Enterprise SMB and after that I'm going to move on to the Managed Security Services Rider. But for now let's look at how a Enterprise or SMB would most likely set up their Forty Manager. Here we have the HQ with the Forty Managers located at. The HQ most likely has a internet breakout and from the internet breakout you probably have an array of 40 gates with maybe site to site VPNs to one another. Maybe they're actually not VPNs, maybe they're just routing public traffic. Either way it doesn't matter how they connect back to the HQ but rather that the HQ holds the 40 manager or maybe the data center holds the 40 manager and the remote de devices sit on the end there. Now in this sort of deployment what do we expect to see? All sites being remote considered branch sites and um, they're configured with simple deployments maybe just a default gateway back to site maybe a really basic policy and firewall deployment with most likely no security profiles they all report back into the 40 manager where the 40 manager is being pre-configured with provision templates and scripts to be pushed out to to all the sites the the beauty of this is you can send a very basic engineer to site to achieve the goal and you can get it connected up to the 40 manager and then the remote engineers with the skills and expertise within the 40 gate uh, area can actually connect in and, and configure it. This uses that top down management meaning that all the changes we make will be on the 40 manager and they'll be installed onto the devices as opposed of being made on the devices and imported into the 40 manager. The firewall policies are most likely common. Each branch is almost identical to the next depending on other things of course maybe one branch is bigger than the other maybe it has different services but nine out of ten times in a large deployment the sites are very similar you know maybe they've got an x amount of pcs maybe they uh, supply an x amount of services whatever it may be 
Normally the config is very, very similar and it's just a case of different IPs. As such, device templates and provision scripts along with uh, policy packages can all be deployed onto the FortiGates from the Forti Manager to keep it simple. The next element I want to look about is the managed security provider, the MSSP. In this scenario, we have the data center or HQ again with the Forti Manager hosted. This has a link out to the internet with customers or with the ISP's own Forti Gates. At the back of this, we may have a private layer 3 MPLS VPN. Each customer connecting into that VPN with their own Forti Gates, managed or unmanaged and they report back into the central Forti Manager. The central Forti Manager will be most likely split into multiple ADOMs to either give customer access to it, whether that's read or write access. It may be that in this scenario, the customer themselves or whoever it is that within that MPLS may want to manage their own equipment. So this is where we most likely, if anywhere, would use the backup ADOM scenario where we would allow the configurations to be made directly on the device and synced back into the Forti Manager as opposed to going onto the Forti Manager and making those changes and installing it downstream into the device. We keep that ability of scripting, we keep the options of revision tracking and understanding who made those changes in that backup ADOM, so that's a key element that we keep, uh, but we don't have the ability to make any uh, device changes, not about logging into the device itself, and obviously that can be a hindrance if we've got to log into multiple devices, especially if the customer's a, a large MPLS customer. So now we have an understanding of the use case scenarios for both the MSSP and Enterprise. I just want to dive a little bit more into what the data center or HQ would look like where we actually put the Forti Manager. It's always best to deploy it behind a firewall and only open necessary ports. And you would normally assign a VIP on a Forti gate. An example of this would be like so. You'd have the internet connection into your HQ and then from the HQ into the firewall where you would have a VIP or port forwarding set up downstream into the Forti Manager. And what about accessing the Forti Manager? There's two methods. There's the CLI, the command line interface, or the GUI, the graphical user interface. The command line interface can be accessed by the local console port using a RJ45 to DB9 cable or a DB9 to DB9 console cable. It can also be accessed via the GUI through the Java or you can SSH and telnet into the device. And I mentioned in a previous lesson that just like 40 gates, some of the commands can only be done through the CLI. The cable you use is most likely this, where you have the RJ45 at one end, that would go into the 40 manager, and a serial at the other. The graphical user interface, a few things to mention here, you'll be able to get into that by browsing to the IPs that you can configure on the 40 manager, and I'll go into, into uh, in more detail at the moment the default for the 40 manager. But keep in mind that the 40 analyze feature set is not enabled by default, therefore the 40 view, the event management and the reports tab will not be visible. And depending on the person logging in and what profile they have been set, they will not have full permission. So an example would be if the standard user or restricted user logs in, they will not be able to see the system settings. So the default settings when you've actually turned on a 40 manager, normally it's port 1 or the management interface and it has the 192.168.1.99-24. And you would configure a device to be inside that subnet. So you'd have maybe 192.168.1.100. Once you're plugged in, you should be able to browse and actually go into the Forti Manager via the GUI because you have HTTP and HTTPS enabled. Or you can tell an SSH to that IP to get in via the CLI. Username and password to authenticate. By default, it's admin or lowercase, and the password will be left as blank. And as I said before, the 40, the 40 analyzer feature set and ADOMs are disabled. It's important once you're into the device, the first thing you do is change that password and make it more complex. Um, to the right there, I've included an image of the default tabs that you'll see when you're logging in to the 40 Manager. It's recommended to essentially log in with the GUI to begin with, as it's much easier to configure, and the CLI will tend to be used for scripting or for more advanced users. When you're in, the first sort of settings you want to look at is the network settings, and to get there, click on the system settings, network, under the uh, left-hand side there, and this will take you into the following screen. What we'll do now is we'll jump into the actual 40 manager and we'll make some of these changes ourselves. Okay, so here we are, just logging into the 40 manager. There's the pop-up for the evaluation because we've only got the base license installed. Now what we'd like to do is configure some basic networking settings and to achieve this we're going to click on the system settings. We're going to get the overview of the dashboard. 
and just on the left we're going to go into network and this was the screen that was displayed in the presentation you can see here under port 1 the IP address is the 10.200.99.1 slash 24 I have not configured an IPv6 address as you can see that this particular port is listening on SSH, Telnet, HTTP, ping and not listening on any IPv6 administrative access because there is no IP the service access for forty guard updates and web filtering anti-spam means that if this device was configured as a forty guard uh, it would actually listen for any devices that are sending it uh, requests for updates or if it's uh, looking for URL lookups this here would enable the interface to listen for those default gateway so normally this would be something like this will mean if this guy does not know how to get to anywhere he would go to dot two and it will work because they're in the same subnet however port one is not where my default gateway is port one is a link into the private network that I have set up here I actually have another port which is public which is how I remote into this device the DNS settings are left by default if you click on the all interfaces it will come up with the four ports I have available and you can see there's my internal port and this is my external port so port 2 connects into essentially the internet and from there this is how I get into the device if we now go back to the network settings and click on routing table we can have a look at more details how the routing is going to work within the 40 manager so anything to the 10.203 slash 24 will use the gateway of 10.200.99.254 which is outside port 1 and anything for the 10.02 slash 24 will go out the same gateway out the same port anything that's not inside my private network will all be captured by this gateway of last resort or default gateway and the next hop is a public address outside port 2 IPv6 region table will show us similar information but I'm not going to show it because we have no IPs configured and the last thing we can do on this screen is essentially our basic ping and trace routes to confirm connectivity to certain devices that the 40 manager is trying to reach and to log out the device there's a log out button just on the side there so now we've gone over and had a look at the 40 manager and made some changes I want to touch base on how we would revert those changes as in revert the 40 manager back to its factory settings or if needed actually format the hard drive the 40 manager sits on the way we would do this is there are two commands to reset we would use the execute reset all settings which will return the 40 manager back to its default settings it's important when you perform these um, changes that you actually plug directly into the local console you do not remote in because obviously if you were to remote in and make these changes you would lose connectivity Performing the execute reset or dash settings command will reset the 40 manager back to its default settings, erase the configuration on the flash, including the IPs and routes, disconnect all sessions and reboot the 40 manager. Essentially, this is a factory restore. The execute format command will delete all the database logs and repartition the hard drive, along with deleting all the configurations, templates and so forth. The execute format has additional switches, which include the RAID level, if applicable, and the deep erase option. To back up the 40 manager we would do this through the system settings and the system information widget. Um, it would actually look similar to this. You can see here I've just selected the backup option within the system configuration section on the system widget and it's come up asking me whether I want to encrypt the configuration and if I do just enter a password. If you enter the password do not forget it because you cannot unencrypt this to restore it. This will back up the flash configuration and the database and all device information. It will not back up things like the FDS objects or firmware images. If you do want to use a scheduled backup you have to perform this via the CLI and to the right there I've put in the configuration strings required to achieve that. To restore the configuration just like backing up same place system settings within the system information widget and within the system configuration section within that widget 
you can see I've clicked the restore here and it's asking me to pick a file to restore and enter the password if it's applicable. We also have two additional options which is to overwrite the current IP, routing and HA settings or as you can see if it's grayed out selected by default is to restore in offline mode. Now the first one, the overwrite current IP routing and HA settings, this is the default. If it's on it will restore the entire configuration including network settings. So you need to think to yourself if the network settings are different to untick that. Otherwise, you may find if you restore the configuration, old network settings will also be restored and connectivity may be lost. As always, it's recommended to ensure that when you restore backup, you are connected to the local console port and not doing this remotely. If you turn it off, only the contents of the 40 manager will be restored and not the network settings. The restore in offline mode is enabled by default. The offline mode stops the FortiGate to 40 manager protocol running on TCP 541. This essentially ensures that no one is actually configuring a 40 gate when you restore the configuration as it disables that communication protocol. Last but not least, I just want to have a discussion around what we've learned in this lesson. We started by having a look at the differences between a virtual machine and a physical deployment. We then jumped into the use cases of an enterprise, an SMB versus a managed security service provider. We looked about where you would deploy a 40 manager within your network. We in we confirmed it had to be behind the 40 gate with either port forwarding or a VIP setup. We then went into accessing the 40 manager and what the default settings of a 40 manager looks like. We logged into one and we played around with the basic network settings and viewed how it's been set up currently. And then we touched base on up and actually restoring the configuration of a 40 manager. I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. If it's been helpful, please do like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you.